Okay, so we've been looking at uh, Reed Miller codes. Okay, so we'll continue. And, uh, and I think the way, the way I described it, this was R turbo Reed Miller code of length m, r comma m. Okay, and the block length was 2 power m. Dimension was one plus f choose one plus m choose two plus the auto m choose r and I didn't quite prove it to you the minimum distance will be equal to two power of minus r we, we need to prove this okay so but before that I want to give you different ways of viewing this code I think it's it's important to view this code in several different ways. The first uh, way that we saw was in terms of uh, the generator matrix, right? So how do you construct the generator matrix? So, 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 so let me take a simple example. So if I take, let's say, m equals, uh, so, so maybe I should go to the next page and take m equals four and show you how that might work out. So let's say we take m equals four. There are several vectors of length 16 like 2 power m that we start with okay so we pick that generator matrix using those vectors how do we think of those vectors we think of those vectors as boolean functions okay and we use boolean variables v4 v3 v2 and v1 right? so we use boolean variables vectors and then define boolean functions boolean variables and then boolean functions using these variables okay binary valued variables how do we do that? We start with the first k, which is the one. Okay, what is one? One is one throughout, right? So there, there is there's no problem. So if you're doing sixteen, you don't have one 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 one. Right? So that is one. And then we had the four functions themselves, right? So how did that look? So v four is going to be something like this. V3 is going to be the right. What is V2 going to be? Is that correct? And then V1 is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So those are just for natural uh, binary variables in the natural order. Okay, so we just took them as before. So if we do it uh, work horizontally here, we see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, like that. So it's just 0, 1, 2, 3. Like okay, and then we had uh, other guys here. So we maybe I'll look at this. So V3, V4, uh, V3, V2, V3, V1. And then you have uh, V2, V4. What else? There should be six of them, right? V2, V1, and V1, V4, right? Okay, so there are six of them. You can write it down. I mean, if you write it down, you'll see uh, V3, V4. So I'll write a few of them. I'm not going to write all of them. You can write a few of them. So that will be something like uh, if you write V3, V4, it's just the product of those two words. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, so V3, V4, you can think of it either as the AND or just the product. Okay, so AND and the product are the same. So you can move it back to. So wherever both of them are one, we have one. Otherwise, it will be zero. So what we do is I say b1, b2. So let me do v1, b2. v1, b2 is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. It's just going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, right? Am I right? So if you write v3, uh, v2 also, you can fill it up if you like. Okay, so we'll get something. v1, v4 will be something else. And then what do you have? We will be looking at functions of this form. So, v4, v3, v2. And how many of them there will be? There will be 4 of them. Right? So, v4, v3, v2, v, v4, v2, v1, v1, v2, v3, and v1, uh, v3, v4. Okay? So, there will be 4 of them. And the last function will be v1, v2, v3, v4. Okay? So, so the last guy will be v1, v2, v3. So, I am just running out of room here. Can't, uh, represent all of them here. So what will be V1, V2, V3, V4? The very last one if I write it down. V1, V2, V3, V4. 
Okay, so to do that, okay, so it looks like we have more room. So let's let's try to write it down. So far, I've not been using uh, that much room. So let, let me write it down. Okay, so we uh, we four, v three, v two, v one, then v three, v two, v one. Okay, and then the last one will be v four, v three. V2, V1. So V4, V3, V2, V1 is, will be what? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and the last one will be 1. Everything else will be 0, 0. Which one you can write the other guys also. What will be V3, V4, V3, V2? Uh, V3, V2, V2. It will be like weight 2, right? Weight can only be 2. It will all be 0 except for the Last two, that will be one. Okay, so we V four, V two, V one also will be like that. There will be only two places where it will be one. Okay, so like course you can fill out all these guys. So we will get sixteen vectors of length sixteen. Okay, so these are these we saw form a basis. Okay, so these sixteen guys they form a basis. And we take some subset of these guys to make different read, read Muller codes. For the zero dollar read Muller code, we just take the first row alone. For the first order one, we take the first five rows. For the second order one, we take the first eleven rows. Okay, so that's how we proceed. Is that okay? So that is one way of defining read Muller codes. Okay, so it's just a generate a matrix definition. You look at these Boolean functions, you list them in a certain order. You observe that they are linearly independent and then say you take some subset of them as your rows of the generator matrix, you get the read mode of them. So, another uh, important view is this uh, polynomial view. Okay, so what is this polynomial idea? Polynomial evaluation definition. So, this is also equally important. Okay, so we said that. So I gave you a way of viewing a Boolean function. Okay, so if you say this is a Boolean function in M variables, okay, I gave you a form, a general form in which this can be written. Okay, of course, you are familiar with the min term. Is it called? Is it the min term? I don't know what it's called. Min term or max term or some one of those things. You're familiar with the min term or expression. We saw that the min term or the or can be replaced with XOR. If you think in terms of uh, Boolean vectors and all that, it can be replaced with XOR. And then every uh, not uh, the complement can be simply written as one XOR the without the not. So you multiply it all out, you see that every Boolean function of M variables can be written as a linear combination of what I had before, basis vector. In other words, we are basically looking at polynomials in m variables. Okay, which take which take uh, the variable state binary values. Okay, so I can think of this instead of thinking of Boolean function. Boolean function is a little more complicated. I can think of this as basically a polynomial in m variables. And for this polynomial, we define the degree. What is the degree? What is the degree for this polynomials in n variables? Okay, the first observation we made about this polynomial is, okay, there is no uh, powers. Okay, powers will not show. Okay, so what is the general term in this polynomial? It will be vi1, vi2. So, I think we are all right. So, this is how the general term will look like. There will be no powers. Why will there not be any powers? Why will I not have v1 squared or v1 part 10 or v1, v2 part 10? This is all binary value. Okay, so, vi squared is equal to vi. Okay, so, so, we know that vi squared is equal to vi because these are binary value. Okay, so, you use this idea and notice that the most general term will be something like this. Okay, so, we said degree of this general term is equal to L. Okay, and the degree of the polynomial is maximum degree over all terms. Okay, 
So that becomes a degree of the polynomial. Okay. So another way to define this regular code of R comma M is the following. Okay. You first so to generate uh, the code words of R M comma R M of R M, we can either do the generator matrix like I said before and say the row space is the code word. That's one way. Another way to do it is you select an arbitrary polynomial f of v1 v2 vm of degree less than or equal to r okay that's why the r will come in okay so degree has to be less than or equal to r you pick an arbitrary polynomial okay so what do you mean the arbitrary polynomial so if i say degree less than or equal to r the number of terms it can have is it can have the constant term it can have the degree one term it can have the degree two term you can have the degree 3 term, so on till the degree r term. For each of those terms, you can either put a 0 or a 1 as the coefficient, okay, because that's all binary. Okay, so it will go back to our computation. Okay, so the number of such polynomials will be exactly equal to 2 power k, whatever k we defined before. 1 plus n choose 1 plus n choose 2. Okay, so from a dimension point of view, it's the same thing. And then, how do you generate a code word from this f? The way you do it is, you basically first write down uh, write down this v, vm vm minus 1 or the way to v1 ok so you start with all 0 and do in the natural ordering go all the way to all 1s ok and then your code word the code word is basically what what will you put here ok so what you can do is you can index the coordinates of your code word with this 2 power m m bit vectors Okay, so these are basically 2 power m m bit vectors. These are the possible values taken by a variables v n through v1. Okay, so how do I usually index the coordinates of my code word? I simply say 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 2 power m. Instead of doing that, I will use my m bit binary representation to index the coordinates. I see the first coordinate is actually 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The last coordinate is actually 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Something in the middle is whatever binary sequence they have found. I can index it that way also. What is nice about that way of indexing it is, I can have a very simple description for the actual coordinate bit. What will be C0? C0 will simply be F of 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, if I have a polynomial F of B1 to Vm, the code word that is produced by that polynomial is simply the evaluations of the polynomial at each and every possibility for the m variable set. Okay, so we go all the way up to c2 bar m minus 1. This will be f of 1, 1, 1. Okay, so both of them are exactly the same. Right? Do you agree with me that the description we had before and this description is exactly the same? Is it easy to see? Okay, see, I have I had the generator matrix which where each row was basically standing for one possible term. So when I make an arbitrary code word from the generator matrix, what will I be doing? I will be multiplying some rows by 0, some rows by 1 and adding up all the rows to get one vector. What is the equivalent function? It is some function of degree less than or equal to R. So you take that function and evaluate it, you will get the exact same code word. Okay. So both of them are the same description, but they give you a different flavor of what the code is all about. In one case, you think of a generator matrix and row space. The other case, you think of polynomial evaluation. Okay, so the code words of a read Muller code, every code word of a read Muller code corresponds to a polynomial of degree less than or equal to R. And how do you generate the code word bits? You simply evaluate the polynomial in each of those possible uh, combinations for the variables. Is that okay? Okay, so both of these are useful descriptions in uh, in figuring out several, uh, several properties that you want. Is that okay? Seems interesting. No, maybe. Okay. Is there any question? Something nagging you about this? What is the what is the problem? So let me. I should take an example. Okay. So let's say let's say we take m equals four and r equals one. Okay. Let's say we do that. Okay. So let's say we take m equals four, r equals one. One way to get a code word is so that will be my generator matrix. If I take m equals four and r equals one, so maybe I should just copy this and then we will uh, we'll go up somewhere else. Okay, that will be the generator matrix, right? So, let me simply take that 
can go off here and do this example and some detail for you. So if you copy paste it. Okay, so I'm gonna have m equals four. So this is my generator matrix. So one code word, so suppose I want to generate some arbitrary code word, I can take this is my generator matrix, remember? So I can take a code word C to be let's say 10101 times G. Okay, so this will be one way of doing the code word, right? So what will be this 10101 times G? You will get a vector. What will that vector be? 1010. What will it be here? 0101. 1010. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
Mm. And so I'm claiming, so if you say that this is, uh, say, M0, and, uh, M1, M2, M3, M4, you simply take those message bits and multiply by these functions that represent your row, you will get the corresponding polynomial. So you take these as the coefficients of your polynomials for the corresponding rows. That's the way to formally write it down. If you want to write it. So every message will correspond to a polynomial. Right, that is this view, that is a gender matrix view. Yes. It is also the same thing. Yeah? There is no, no difference. But later on we will see in some proofs, it is just easier to think of it as a polynomial evaluation. Okay? In some proofs, it is easier to think of it as a gender matrix. So it is good to have different views for the same thing. Like, uh, no, no, so, so many different things you would view in different ways for different properties to come out nicely itself. Okay. okay, so what can I put in the middle? Is there a nice property that, yeah, it's a subset, right? So this is included here, this goes included here, this goes included here. That's the first uh, thing I can put. The second property I already alluded to before, okay. Uh, so let me ask it in the form of a question first. Okay. Suppose I have an arbitrary polynomial in M, and suppose I say degree is less than or equal to m minus one. So degree is not m, degree is less than or equal to m minus one. So suppose I generate a code word corresponding to this. So what do we mean by generating a code word corresponding to this? We will evaluate each of these possibilities. What can I say about the weight of this code word? It will be even, right? Can you say that? Okay. Right. So, so a property like this may not be very easy to prove from the evaluation point of view. It's also there, but it's not. May not be very easy. But if you view it as a vector uh, combination, combination from the generator matrix is very easy because you see every function without the nth degree one has even weight. So this polynomial evaluation is nothing but the XR of even weight coordinates. It has to be even. Okay. So that's a very easy thing to see from the vector point of view. It may not be very easy from the polynomial point of view. I will show you another property which is true from the polynomial point of view, which is difficult to check from the vector point of view. So, it is all give and take. And some, some people like one view, some people like the other view. Some things are better for them. Okay? This is the other property. The third property I want to show is a little bit more involved, and it is a crucial property. It is about the construction of regional methods. It gives you a nice handle on the construction. This is the construction. Okay? So, if you take. Uh, R plus 1, M plus 1. Okay, so what is this? This is the R plus 1 for the regional code of length 2 power M plus 1. So I have increased one more variable. Okay. It turns out this can be written as U. Okay, I will put a vertical slash here. The vertical slash does not mean anything, just concatenation. Okay, U plus B. Okay, such so that U actually belongs to Reed-Muller code R plus 1 but M and then V belongs to Reed-Muller code R comma Ok, so this is a very very nice property and it is used to show some very powerful result. In fact, it's one of its uses is to show the minimum distance design. Ok, okay first of all, before we go into proving it, does it first of all, does it even make sense? Ok, see remember what is the length of a code word for R plus 1 comma M plus 1? be 2 power m plus 1. Do I have a 2 power m plus 1 vector here? Yes, I do, right? So, u is a 2 power m vector, v is also a 2 power m vector. So, u here is 2 power m, here is 2 power m, 2 power m plus 2 power m is 2 power m plus 1. So, at least from that level, it makes sense. The next level you might want to think about is number of code words on the LHS and the RSS. Okay? Let me see. Try this. Show that the number of code words on the left hand side is equal to the number of code words on the right hand side. Remember, u can be fixed in here arbitrarily. V can be fixed from there arbitrarily. Can you show that? Yeah. yeah. So you have to use the combinatorial identity, right? So you have to see that carefully, and then you will see that it will work out. Okay. So it needs some working, right? It is not immediate. Am I right? See, number of views is what? No, it's not one plus. M choose 1, M choose 2 all the way to M choose 
R plus 1. Number of V's is 1 plus M2, so still M2 is R. Then you have to multiply those two or add those two. You have to multiply those two. And then claiming you get this guy. Okay, so it's a, it's a bit of a non-trivial operation. It's not just one application of the result that you are citing, but that result is something you have to use. Okay, so you will do that carefully. Okay, try it, try it as a combinatorial identity. If you are interested in manipulating combinatorial things, it's not a major thing, but something you can show that this is true. Okay, so it makes sense at least from a first, first order point of view. Okay, then you might want to. I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, there might be. I mean, there's more fancy identities. I know this combinatorics is, is involved identities. Right? You can use anything you want. Try to prove it. That's so, just a little bit of a challenge in case you want to prove it. But we'll prove it using our Reed Solomon method, Reed Muller code method. Right? So, Reed Muller codes, we will show that this gives you this. Right? We'll start from the left hand side and go to the right hand side. Okay? We'll I'll give you a method. So starting with an arbitrary code word on the left hand side and going to the right hand side okay, and then vice versa so I have shown a one to one mapping so this okay, so this is a way of proving the combinatorial identity field okay, so you can think of it that way also okay. alright so here the polynomial view is very nice okay, so if you take the uh, vector view it is not hard it can be done but the polynomial view is also nice it okay, gives you a very nice handle on what is going to happen okay. so what I am going to do like I said is I am going to start with the code word on the left hand side and show you how to find u and v. Okay, so once I do that, I will show that u belongs to this code word, v belongs to this code word. So I will be done. Okay, going the other way also, we will see it is possible. It is not very good. Okay, so let us try that. Okay, so, so what is an arbitrary code word that belongs to rm of r plus 1 comma m plus 1? Okay, let us think of it as a polynomial. Okay, so I am going to take a polynomial in m plus 1 variables and I know degree is less than or equal to r plus 1, right. So, this will have several terms, it is the sum of several terms, it will be like that, okay. So, it will have a lot of terms which do not involve v m plus 1, okay. it may have, okay. So, I am going to collect all those terms and call it as g of v 1 to v m, okay. All those terms which do not have v m plus 1. Okay, so, it is a, sum, it's a my polynomial in m, m plus 1 variables. There will be like several terms which do not have v m plus 1. There can be. All those ways you collect together and put it into g. What will be the degree of this guy? What can you say about the degree of this guy? So, it could be r plus 1. Okay, so, I do not know. In, in case m, m is greater than r plus 1, in most cases will be true. So, it is it. Then, what else will be left? All the other terms will have v m plus 1. What does that mean? I can pull v m plus 1 outside. So, once I pull v m plus 1 outside, I will have something else which I will call h of again v m only. Okay, and what can I now say about the degree here? Less than or equal to r. Is that okay? Okay. So, if I evaluate f, I will get a vector of length 2 power m plus 1. Okay. What I can do instead is to evaluate g for all 2 power m plus 1 possibilities first okay, and then I can evaluate v m plus 1 times h for all 2 power m plus 1 possibilities and then I can XR those two vectors. I will get the exact same answer. Okay. So, the code word here corresponding to this guy, remember it is 2 power m plus 1 possibilities over all the m plus 1 variables v 1 through v m plus 1. Now, what will happen if I evaluate g over all 2 power m plus 1 possibilities? Whenever we it is just independent of v m plus 1. Okay, so, v m plus 1 is 0 for the first 2 power m cases and then v m plus 1 is 1 for the next 2 power m cases. But it does not matter because v m plus 1 does not even show up. So, I should get the same vector repeated. Okay. So, I will get a vector which is u and then u itself. Do you agree? So, what is u now? u is simply g evaluated on m book vector. Is that okay? So, you take g evaluated on the m bit vectors, v m plus 1 does not really matter, v will be 0 for a while and then 1 for the next, it does not matter. See, v m plus 1 is the largest thing, right? That is 0 for the first 2 param, 1 for the next 2 param, okay? So, that is how the variables will be, okay? Now, what about this guy? What will be the first 2 param part? 0. 
Okay, why will it be zero? What is the n plus one will be? So for x two power n part, it will be an evaluation of h that I will call b. Okay, so what is b? B is the evaluation of h on n bit vectors again. Okay, only n bit vectors. So the n plus one has become one. It just it's outside only on n bit vectors. Okay, what do you know about u now? U will belong to obviously g is a degree r plus one polynomial in m variables. So clearly u belongs to r m of r plus one m. What about b? B belongs to r m of r plus one. Okay, and that's my result. Okay, so any code word in r m of r plus one comma m plus one can be written in this u u plus v form. Okay, so this u u plus v is a very powerful construction. I'll show you a very interesting property for it soon enough. It's a very interesting and powerful construction. Okay, so how do you go? Are there ways? Are there ways? Very trivial. I mean, you just take anything like this, you combine it, you go back, and every step I did can be reversed. Okay, so I can go this way, I can go that way. It means this is a one-to-one -one transformation, and I can. Yes. So, dependent on the m plus one, are we using the logs for r and r? No, the degree can be r plus one. Degree is r plus one. See, the inclusion doesn't go the other way. See, this case, for instance, r m of v will also belong to this. Well, the inclusion goes that way. But the other way, there is no inclusion. Yes. No, no, less than or equal to r plus. That is the definition for the uh, Miller codes, right? I think I made that degrees. Did I get that right? I don't know if I clearly stated it, but yeah, degree is less than or equal to r. Okay, less than or equal to r. Is it okay? So that's our proof for this u u plus v. Okay, so there are lots of powerful interpretations of this through uh, this thing. So, for instance, if you get a generator matrix, so I'll give you a generator matrix interpretation. This, this is a very interesting uh, interpretation. Okay, so remember, if I now think of a generator matrix, okay, uh, okay, okay. So let me go back and take that back. Okay, so so I think yes, I told some nonsense about the multiplication here, which is not true. Okay, so. <laughs> So, so the number of code words here is two power the dimension times two power the dimension. Okay, so the dimensions only add. Okay, don't don't. I mean, I think I said some multiplication involved. There's no multiplication involved, but there are several terms in the summation. You have to use the identity repeatedly to do that. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so let me go back and correct it. I'm sorry, I said that. Okay, so the number of code words u is two power k of r plus one comma m. The number of code words v is two power k of R comma M. So when I multiply those two, the dimensions will add. Okay, but it's not just n plus one choose R plus one. You have also n plus one choose R n plus one. So you have to add everything together and carefully see that it adds up to this. Okay, so that's the only thing you have to do. Can be done very easily. It's not very hard. Okay, so let me correct that. Okay, so when I thought about the generator matrix, I understood that there is a mistake there. Okay, so now let's think in terms of generator matrix for Z uh, R plus one. So, may, so so what happens if we look at R n of R plus one comma N plus one? Every code word can be written as u u plus v, where u belongs to R m of R plus one m, v belongs to R m of R comma m. Okay, so this imposes a structure on the generator matrix of my code. Okay, so I can have a generator matrix for this code, which may be like that: u of R plus one comma m plus one, which will have this form. Okay. What kind of a form? First thing I can do is I can put this vertical line here. Okay, I'll separate it into two par m, two par m. Okay, what I have before two par m is is from R m of R plus one comma m. So I can put a G R plus one comma m here. Okay, now the same code word also shows up on the other side, which means I should put the same G of R plus one comma m here also. Then what else should I put? Below this, I should put G of R comma M. Okay, so uh, okay, here, what will happen here? Here it is. Okay. All right. So, so this is not really a very drastic result. If you think in terms of all possible binary vectors and then putting one below the other, this form will be clear also. But it's very hard to visualize that from the all possible binary vectors. Think about it. It's very hard. It's, at least for the general R, I find it difficult. 
so it's not too hard. But it's difficult to visualize it, but from a polynomial point of view, the proof is very clean and this just comes out very nicely. Okay. So what can I do now? I can repeatedly use this result. Okay, so I had it for m plus 1, r plus 1. I use it repeatedly in each of these plots. I'll simplify, 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 simplify. I'll go to sum. Go to a form which is which has uh, lesser values for m and r. Then at that point, I can fill it back. And fill it. Okay, so there is this recursive structure that is implied by this u, u plus b. Okay, so this recursive structure is quite useful in, in several contexts. Okay, and uh, it could be like it. So there's lots of things uh, that you can do with this recursive structure. Is that okay? So this is one uh, way in which this u, u plus b structure is used. Okay, so if you want to come up with a large generator matrix, you don't have to remember the entire large generator matrix. You can remember smaller matrices and then put it together nicely. Okay, so you can repeatedly do this, and that that kind of a thing is useful in lots of semi-processing. I mean, if you want to remember some big matrix, you can you can do it very nicely. Okay, think about that. That's one utility. The other utility, of course, is in the minimum distance. Okay, so that's the that's the thing I'm going to show for you next. Okay, so let's let's talk about this u u plus v construction. Okay, suppose I have two codes c1 and c2. Okay, so let me write down the two codes separately. Let's say I have two codes c1, which is an n k1 d1 code, and c2 is an n k2 d2 code, and suppose I make a code c which is u u plus b u and c1. B and C. Okay, this is properly well defined, right? Both of them have the same length. They can have different dimensions; it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. What will be the size of this code? Two part k one plus k two. So finally, the block length here will be two n. That is quite easy to see. What will be the dimension? K one plus k two. Okay, that's also very easy to see. What about the minimum distance? That's my question. Okay, so this is very. Interesting construction. Let me see. Think about it for a while. Let me see some guesses on minimum distance. What can I say about minimum distance? Will be greater than. Yeah, I mean, I want I want good bounds. I mean, say greater than d1. Fine, yeah, that's that's true. But I want to use both sides. I don't want to use just one side, right? So if I if I do use just one side, then there's no point in doing the u plus v. I have to be able to use both sides, then come up with a nice. Uh, for instance. If I say a code word of C is non-zero, okay, right? There are two possible cases. V could be zero or V could be non-zero. If V is zero, what happens? You have two D1. Okay, so that's a better better answer than D1. If V is non-zero, what what happens? That is the trick. Okay, so there's a little trick here to use to get a good decent bound. It turns out if v is non-zero, you can show the weight will be greater than or equal to d2. Okay. Think about it. Let me see. try this proof for about five minutes. It's an interesting talk. My claim is if v is zero, minimum weight is greater than or equal to 2d1. That's very easy, right? You have u u. U has to be non-zero, right? If v is zero, u has to be non-zero. So non-zero code word, the same code word repeating it should have at least weight d1. So do 2d1. It's very easy. If v is non-zero. Okay, u could be zero. If u is zero, then you have d2 ready made. But if u is not zero, then u plus v can cancel something, right? But then what has to happen? Whatever u plus v cancels, you add here also, right? That's the idea. So if at all u is u is cancelling some things in v in the right part, on the left part that will be a one that's adding. Only if it is a one, it can reduce the weight. If it is a zero, it can't reduce weight. So it will be adding it. So whatever it cancels here, it has to add on this side. So it should be at least greater than equal to b. Is it okay? So you can show the minimum distance b is greater than or equal to minimum of two d one comma d two. Okay, so that's the result you can show for the u u plus b construction. It's a bit non-trivial. This part is quite easy. This part is a little bit tricky, but you have to think about it. So you have to think about it for a while. Condition on b. And v is non-zero. What can happen? V is zero. What can happen? Okay. 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 
Okay, so now I'm going to miss. It's two pi m minus r. I'm yeah. going to prove it. I'm going to prove that using this result. Okay. So, so in fact, okay. So we will see. We'll see some. So what do we do for the Reed Miller code? So for the RM code, RM code, I know this identity, but RM of R plus one, comma M plus one equals U U plus B such that U is in RM of R plus one, comma M, U is in RM of R comma M. I want to say I want to show something like minimum distance of the Reed Miller code is two part m minus r. Okay, is there any method that is suggesting itself to you? Induction. Okay, so we have to do induction on it. Okay, so you assume that for m for all r it is true that minimum distance is two part m minus r. And for some small m you can verify that. It's very easy. Check so take for m equals eight and exhaustively verify it, or m equal to four, m equal to two and exhaustively verify it. It's a very simple case. So you can exhaustively verify that for small m. Okay, and then your index assum assumption is for a particular m, it is true that the minimum distance is two pi m minus r. What happens to m plus one is what I have to show. For that, I will use this. Okay, so what happens to the d min here? Greater than or equal to min of what? Two times minimum distance of the first guy. What is the minimum distance of the first guy according to my index assumption? Two part m minus r minus one. Two times that is what? Two part m minus r. Okay. And then what about the other guy? It's again two part m minus r. How do I know that this bound will be met? How do I know from here? How can I go to equality? Yeah, yeah, there is a V, right? So, I mean, I know minimum distance of R m of R comma m is equal to two pi m minus R. You simply set U equal to zero and take a minimum weight code word from there. You have to get two pi m minus R. Okay, so if you know the minimum distance, you can exactly say that it has to happen also. Okay, so from here you can go to the equality also. So check the equality if you like, okay, but it should be trivially okay. Okay, so I've shown for R m of R plus one comma m plus one, D minus two pi. M minus R, and that is enough. Okay, so my induction can proceed now to M plus one. You can check for other cases if you like. It will just work. Out. Okay, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so by induction on M, it will work. Can prove this result. Okay, so the U U plus V construction, I hope you agree, is quite useful. Gives you a nice proof of the minimum distance. Gives you a recursive structure for the generator matrix, which you can use for encoding if you like. Okay, so if you're encoding a large n uh, regular code, you may not want to store the entire generator matrix. You don't have to do that if you use the recursive construction. You can store smaller parts and get away. Okay. All right. So uh, that's about uh, the thing. And the last thing I want to show you today is yet another view of the regular code. Okay. It has become very, very popular recently. Okay, so it was used before, but recently with this new type of codes called polar codes, this interpretation of Weidmuller codes has become much more popular. Okay, so, so another construction. Okay, so this I won't prove in any great detail, but you can probably think about it and convince yourself that it's true. Okay, so what we'll do is we will construct a two par m. Cross two par m binary matrix. Okay. Okay. So, 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 if you think about the the, the boolean function boolean function construction, this is what we did. We came up with two par m vectors of length two par m. So you can think of it as a matrix, and we took basis vectors from that matrix. As a subset of the rows, we took the first one row, or first six rows, or first eleven rows, or something. Some some subset of the rows we took as our generator matrix. Okay. A similar idea is used here, except that the two par m by two par m matrix is constructed differently. So how do you do that? You do it as follows. You start with this innocent looking matrix one one zero one, which may be of all G two. Okay. 
then G4 is going to be G2 Kronika product with G. Okay, so that is this Kronika product. I don't know if you know what a Kronika product is. You take two matrices A and B, you replace every element of A, A, M, N by A, M, N times B. Okay, so every element is blown up into a matrix, but a scaled version of the next matrix. Okay, so Kronika product is a crazy product, it is not commutative and all that. It you, but it is always well defined. For any two matrices A and B, it is different. Okay. So you will get a big matrix, the product of the two rows, product of the two columns as the ultimate dimension. So it will be a bigger matrix. It will blow up. Okay. So what happens when I do G2, Kronika G2 here? I get 1, 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, 1. This will be 0, 0, 0, 0. And you will get 1, 1, 0, 1. So wherever you have a 1, you simply get the same. Now what about G2, Kronika product G2, another Kronika product with G2. If you take this and take a Kronika product with G2, you will get G8. Take another Kronika product with G2, you will get G16. So if you go to each of these guys, you will see that G2 power M is basically G2, Kronika product G2, Kronika product so on to G2, M times. Okay. You can write it as a 2 power M by 2 power M binary matrix, this rows will be permutation of, will be some permutation of, okay, of the previous rows that we had. What are the previous rows that we had? 1, Vm, Vm minus 1, V1, and then products etc. all the way down to Vm, Vm minus 1. Okay. It is quite easy to see why the top row has to be 1. Right? Whenever I keep on doing it, top row will be 1. Similarly, the bottom row will be Vm, V1. Everything will be 0 except for the last one being 1. The other things are a little bit more complicated, but you can go through it, try it for a few experiments. It can also be shown rigorously that if you do this repeated Veronica product, the rows that you get in your 2 par m by 2 par m matrix will be the same as the rows that you had before, except that it will occur in a different order. Okay? Then what can you do to construct regional approach from this? You simply choose those different rows. Okay, so one of the key innovations that have been that's been around recently now in uh, polar codes, which has become very popular, is instead of choosing the rows as suggested by the Reed-Muller idea, you choose the rows differently from this. Okay, and how you choose that will depend on the channel and all that. Okay, so how the channel polarizes, etc. Et so you use all those ideas to pick this. So this is uh, this concept is quite interesting in that fashion, but that's the idea. Okay, so, read-mill approach can also be constructed this way. I do not want to go into more details here, it is not immediately useful for us. So, we won't, we won't use it very extensively. Uh, so, that is the, that's the end of it. Okay. So, there is one more property for the read-mill approach that we have to do and after that we can look at encoding and decoding. And uh, I think that is got to do with the dual of the read-mill approach. So we came up to the minimum distance assumption. The next thing we saw was demon equals. 2 power n minus r for uh, Muller Rm. The next thing about the dual. Okay, the dual you can show the dual of r, Rm of r comma n will be Rm of m minus r minus 1 comma n. Okay, so that is the result which I will prove in the next class. Okay, so the main result we will prove in the next class will be about the dual. Next class. If you want, if you want, if you want the dual, you get R m of m minus r minus m. Okay, so this, this we will see is it is quite easy. Proof is very easy. But uh, once again the proof will involve uh, the, the, the polynomial view and the vector view. Okay. And if you go back and forth between the two, it is a bit confusing. But it is a simple proof. So after this we will see encoding decoding. Okay, and that will that will pretty much finish up the read mode approach. And I will tell you, I mean there are there are a few references. I think your book has, I think the Linden Costello book has a reasonable account of Reed-Muller codes, you can read it. And there are also other references, but whatever is there in Linden Costello is good enough. Okay, so everything is there is what I have not done anything beyond that. I am going to stick to that for this. Okay, so that will end uh, Reed-Muller codes. Uh, so we will we'll finish Reed-Muller codes tomorrow and uh, we will meet after that next week.